Welcome back to HTC Invitational. I'm your host, Nimsh, and I'm joined here by Monk, my co-host. Monk, I've asked you many times, how are you doing? But how are you really doing? Uh, I don't know, Nimsh. Uh, I could get into some like existential stuff right now. But for now, I'll just say I'm doing pretty well, enjoying all these games. But unfortunately, uh, Team Liquid isn't doing well uh, that well so far with Savits going out 0-3 in the last match to Tempo Storm's hyped. So maybe I'm feeling a little down at the moment. That's my answer. All right, but I'm going to cheer you up because the next match is going to be amazing. It's Strive Crew versus Dog. We've seen many dogs unleashed by Savit, but this is the dog. Yeah, it's it's uh, the Franker Z, right? It's going to yeah. be like a, an American mirror match. We've seen pretty much all Europeans so far, ex with the exception of uh, Hyped. But now it's it's time for like the North American players to really sh show their true colors. And it's going to be a great one because it's probably like two of the best North American players that we have. Strife Crow, possibly regarded as being one of the best uh, players in the world and probably the regarded as the best American player or the best North American player in the world. And meanwhile, we have Dog, who's more of a newcomer, but he's definitely shown his face a lot in tournaments. And um, he's had a really educational stream. And he's uh, definitely, I don't know if we can even call him one of uh, an up-and-comer at this moment, because it does seem like he's still very established. That being said, he has yet to win his first tournament, and uh, the ACC Invitational might just be that. I think that Dog actually came close to to couple finals, right? Um, I think Pinnacle, one of the Pinnacles, he was maybe in the final. Um, was it Pinnacle or, or was it a different tournament? Uh, he was in the finals of uh, Heroes of the Cards tournament. I believe it was like number four. He was also in the semifinals of the Xfinity uh, Black Rock Mountain tournament. All right. So, like, I also know that he qualified for DreamHack Winter, if I'm not mistaken. Um, oh, no, it was, it was Seed Story Cup. Seed Story Cup. So Dog was one of the guys who actually qualified uh, as Seed Story Cup too. Uh, so Dog's been around and he's streaming a lot. He is a great player from uh, Team Complexity, I believe. And uh, versus Cloud9's Strive Bro. Uh, I, well, NA player is going to win this match. That's for sure. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, with two NA players, it's kind of hard for... It, I would call shenanigans if like a European won this match. I mean, for example, if Nimsh, you, uh, you came in and played for one of the players, right? Are you really Dog or Strife Crow? Well, I, you know, like I've in the, in the past, I was actually casting and playing the game at the same time. But here, I prefer Strife Crow to actually play his match. Uh, in person, you know, but uh, and hopefully Dog is playing his game as well, like not nobody else is playing Dog's game for him. For him, but the players are ready, Monk. Uh, we're going to start game number one: Strive Bro versus Dog. Wow, look at that lineup: Paladin, Rogue, and Shaman from Dog. What are the class? What are those classes? We haven't seen them. I think Dog is just like playing all the underdog classes at this moment. <laughs> I mean, okay. sh Shaman and Paladin, like, they're classes that you pretty much don't even see these days because they're kind of regarded as, like, the worst classes. I think uh, Shaman, Paladin, and Priest are kind of regarded as, like, the probably the worst or the most underdog classes. Meanwhile, Rogue, even though it has been popular before, these days it's kind of, like, being, like, pushed down by, um, for example, all the Hunters, um, maybe some of the mid-range dudes, and, of course, like, all the... Um, all the control warriors that have been coming up to counter the patron warriors. All right, so if Dog is playing all the underdog classes, looking at Strife Crow's lineup, is it over Strife Crow? Over Strife Crow lineup? Because we've seen those classes classes many times before. This is yeah. it's, possibly it's, the strongest lineup. Like it's all it's like definitely like a battle of David versus Goliath. Not only in terms of like uh, tournament results, Strife Crow obviously being the more successful tournament player, but also in terms of uh, classes, like Strife Crow is playing like I would say the three best classes, uh, widely regarded as the three best classes at the moment, while Dog is playing like two of uh, the widely regarded worst classes, as well as Rogue, which is kind of in the middle slash the bottom. Well, David won, so do you think Dog is going to win? Yeah, I would definitely like hope so because as i said before this tournament started i really cheer for the players that bring in like the unusual decks because not only are they fun for the viewer they're fun for commentators to commentate as well so just more fun all around and i really hope to see dog getting far in this tournament all right fingers crossed uh, that we are going to see a lot of interesting decks i'm definitely hyped about the paladin i hope this is the dragon paladin we're going to see but now this is shaman versus hunter 
the Hunter Hybrid, similar to what Ika played, maybe even the same list, one to one. But what is Dog really playing? This is not the uh, Mech Shaman. This is seems like a hybrid, or maybe just uh, a good midrange Shaman. Yeah. Meanwhile, we have Strife Crow. I think Strife Crow is actually playing the the hybrid Hunter as well because he had Glaive Zookas in his deck. He had uh, Leopard Gnomes, but he also has High Mains. Yeah. And Lothab, yeah. He got that Leog though. Not a great uh, companion there. Yeah, a, a very like not only is the big game hunter a good play to contest the the Leoc, but I think it's also a meta game call because he probably knows like yeah this mid range hunter is or this hybrid hunter is getting popular in tournaments and on ladder lately, so there's probably not going to be a Doctor Boom which is not in this hybrid hunter list. So let's talk about the matchup as well. Uh, here a nice clear by with Anish the Hounds. Or maybe even going for face. But overall, who do you think is favored in this matchup? I think just generally the Hunter is favored because like the Hunter hero power is just so good against the uh, against the uh, Shaman hero power. Because the Shaman hero power, all it does is it creates more hounds for the opponent. Uh, while the shaman here, or while the hunter hero power, it's kind of an uncounterable two damage to the opponent's face every single turn. That being said, like dog has been doing quite well recently with, uh, or in this game rather, with the mid range shaman, just drawing pretty well with the zombie charge with the earth shocks, curving into um, a haunted creeper and even a BGH. So even though I would say the the hunter is favored, I think the draws are favoring dog at the moment. And he draws a zombie chow, so he kind of jinxed him. But he does have the Azure Drake. Also, uh, I like seeing that Harrison Jones, especially now in a very heavy weapon meta game, a like Green Patron being super popular, Hunter being super popular and strong. Uh, I, I think Harrison Jones is a nice meta call. Yeah, I definitely agree. Even uh, the power mix. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I think a lot of players um, are playing the Feral Spirits as opposed to the Power Mace. Um, in order to deal with like hunters, for instance, but the problem with feral spirits is it, it leaves you really weak to patron warrior. Yeah. So, and power mace is like one of those cards that is really good against patron warrior because it's uh, able to easily deal with patrons. So kind of the the reverse aspect of that. But because we see the power mace, like we know that this deck is going to be maybe slightly worse against hunters without the extra taunts that you can get. Is there any way for him to get taunts? Like, he might be playing Defender of Argus. Is there anything else? Obviously, the, ta the taunt taught him. Uh, let's see. S Sludge Belchers are kind of common in Shaman these days as an additional 5 drop. So, yeah, makes sense. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see that. But you know, Strife on the other hand, right now, we are not really seeing much aggression from Strife Crow. Unless he's going for phase with that with the Lotha because he is running kill commands, he is running uh quick shots, I believe. Oh, top deck Kex. Exactly wow. what he needed. Yep. Um, I think actually possibly the Earth Shock would even would have even been better in this case. Because it lets you uh uh use up your mana more efficiently, I guess. But I think he'll take the hex here. No problem. Yeah, hex is still great. Just dealing with the high main. Oh, it's oh. Close sheep. Wait, what does it change actually? Um, doesn't change much. So, do you like killing the Lothab with Azure Drake, or do you like killing Lothab with Power Mace, or maybe just Hex and um, Harvest Golem? Yeah, I like this. Um, mostly because you are playing a Hunter after all. Let's not forget that, Nimsh. So, yeah, uh, taking five damage to face is dangerous. Exactly. <laughs> Alright, well, was the sheep good or not? Because I, I'm still on the fence here. Alright, it was good then. <laughs> I wasn't sure, but now it looks good. It, the sheep also just does really well with uh, all Strike for his minions. And also, like it's really hard for Hunter to deal one damage to a single creature. So yeah, it does look like the sheep will be paying some dividends here. Well, looking at that sheep, Doc should be able to smile sheepishly. Uh, but he is not. He's actually really focused. Both players are actually keeping very calm faces. 
Look how calmly Strife could attack face with that huffer. That was a really calculated attack. So, mad at high totem. Kind of a double-edged sword in this matchup. Draws you more cards, but gives your opponent more hounds. But you've seen one on each the hounds already, so I don't think it's that bad. Then again, that sheep is doing um, going to do well. Oh, we even forget the sheep is a mech. Yeah, so... the sheep is actually a mech. It's quite possible that, uh, I mean, it's not going to be relevant here because the sheep is almost certainly going to sacrifice its uh, life. But that could have been relevant in another game, in another time. <laughs> you mean just keeping up a, a buffed sheep and uh, killing your opponent yeah. with it, with the attacks? That would be uh, such sweet irony. Alright. There is a secret, by the way. Uh, there's a freezing trap. So Dog playing that Zombie Chow to counter the Freezing Trap, he expects the Freezing Trap to be there. Oh wow, uh, high main top deck. Yeah, Dog needs another Hex, I believe. Yeah. Pretty much uh, Strife Crow like, topping out his curve really well. Even fitting those hero powers, because he knows like, okay, if I draw into my kill commands later on, then my opponent won't be able to deal with it. Alec here is a really nice draw. Strife Crow oh yeah, it is. Hard time getting through that Alec here. I, I really actually like Alec you here because you can deal six points of damage and you stop the Hymen from attacking. You are kind of weak to Iron Bigao, but then you are still not dead. Like, even if Iron Bigao silences Alec here, you're not dead to just a simple Hymen attack and hero power. You can also play Fire Elemental, uh, then you can get Totem, and with Fire Elemental, try killing um, Hymen, but that's. Uh, that's not a strategy to win, and here you are dealing so much damage. Actually, you are setting up a, a lethal here. If um, <laughs> Alright, Quickshot was actually great for Strife Crow, because now he can kill Alakir. Without Quickshot, if you would get like something like a blank, like a Leprono maybe, or, or Juggler. Oh, okay, Juggler was actually having a chance to get the, the shield as well. But uh, it was just... How dare you uh, desecrate the name of Leper Gnome? Yeah, okay, I'm so sorry. Leper, Leper Gnome is never blank. Come on. Yeah. But honestly, not getting out the shield would be lethal for... Um, Dog would have lethal there. Now he is a bit far off, but Strife Cron... Oh man, that juggler, by the way. Those, those haunted creepers just are smiling for the juggler. Just... They just having the knives for the juggler. Juggler drops and then the, they're just going to pass the knives and he's going to throw them. Oh, flame tongues. Not amazing. It's he was definitely, of damage. He basically needed, uh, or he had to hope for either a hex or an earth shock here. But unfortunately, he didn't get either of them. He will be able to clear one of the hyenas. But it's... <laughs> yeah, it's I mean, still here. This feels so bad. But you know what? Dog isn't in too bad of a position. Because uh, we don't see any burst from Strife Crow's hand. But oh, there we go. Is that it? That's it. Uh, I yeah, believe. definitely. Definitely. That's that's it. It's it's actually going to be uh, exactly lethal here. Yeah, nine points of damage. So Strife Crow is going to take down Dog. First win. First game. First blood. Yeah. Like, but it, it, I think it actually... This game was actually really close. In fact, uh, it was relied on that one top deck. But it I, actually, I think it tells you a lot about this matchup because Dog actually had just like a really incredible start with Zombie Chow, Earth Shock, into Haunted Creeper, into Big Game Hunter, yeah. curving out really well. But Strife Crow was still able to take it. Um, granted, Strife Crow drew fairly well, drawing both high mains in the mid stages of the game. But yeah, then again, like both players are drawing somewhat decently. So I have to Absolutely. say, yeah, it just shows you how great Hunter is against Shaman. All right, we are looking at an amazing phone at the same time while you are explaining what was happening. So I just want to remind our viewers that there is a giveaway, guys. Just tweet uh, with a hashtag HTC Esports and uh, tell us how are you enjoying the tournament. Tell other people about the tournament and you'll be able to enter the giveaway. We're giving away some jerseys, phone, uh, tablets. Uh, basically, give yourself a chance to get stuff. Here we can see a very fast win for Dog. Oh wait. I'm not sure what's happened there to be honest. Oh okay, apparently uh, we're getting word from production that 
Stripeco actually picked the wrong deck. So, a little unfortunate there. I'm not sure what the ruling on that is. I guess it's just going to be a regame. So, Stripeco, we saw he was playing Zoo before, but actually, now he's playing Headlock. Alright, so... Basically, Handlock is his deck for this tournament, and um, what do you think about this matchup? There is a Shaman versus Handlock. Originally, it was very good for the Shaman because of Earthshock, because of Flametongue Totem. That's uh, being able to deal with the Giants if you have a board. But now maybe it changed a bit, and this is a bit of a different Shaman with Power Mace and some mechs. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I think one of the biggest changes is that Dog, he's running double Zombie Chow, so that's going to hurt the matchup a lot. Um, I think this matchup relies heavily on what cards the Shaman has because the Shaman, like, it needs the burst to end the game pretty much. Um, it, if he's running Doomhammer, for instance, it actually changes the matchup a lot, I feel, because you do get that extra burst. Um, also, even though Dog doesn't have Hexes or Urshocks in his opening hand, this Mana Tide Totem will be able to do a lot of work as well. Yeah, Mana Tide Totem is amazing. And come on, you have to give us something to Zombie Chow. Just healing your opponent with Zombie Chow so they can never play Molten Giants. Yeah. Just I, I keep actually. Them at full health till you die. They will never be able to play Molten Giants. Exactly. You know, most people say that, like, Hexes and Earth Shocks are, like, the best cards in this matchup. But I actually think Mana Tide is the best because it forces your opponent to deal with it. It's, it's going to draw a card. And it's either going to force your opponent to either. Uh, Silence it, Hellfire it, or Dark Bomb it, which is a pretty good deal, I would say. Oh wow, a big game uh, Hunter top deck. That would be amazing against that uh, the giant. By the way, Zombie Chow is not that bad here as well. Uh, it will be able to deal some damage and maybe force a, a Hellfire, an early Hellfire force. Okay, so I think uh, if Dog knew for certain that Actually, like, I, I would have considered the Mana Tide Totem there. Because you probably know that your opponent is kind of more like the, um... The, what about the... Dark Bomb? Into, you want to play Mana Tide, uh, Mana Tide into Dark Bomb? Yeah, I think it's just getting it out there more. I guess this this actually makes sense as well, because it makes your opponent's turn 4 a little more awkward. Uh, unless he has Hellfire. I think another problem that Shamans have in this matchup, though, is because Grim Patron Warrior is so popular, Handlocks are running double Hellfire, or tend to run double Hellfire. So it's more likely that your opponent does have the double Hellfire, but we actually see something interesting from Strife Girl. He's running double, Shadow, double Flame. Shadow Flame. And usually when you run da double Shadow Flame, it means you're not running double Hellfire. So kind of an interesting tech choice from Strife Girl, and I definitely want to hear his thoughts on that. Do you think there is a chance that he is actually running double Hellfire, double Shadow Flame? Yeah, so, um, I think there's a pretty good chance, actually, just because, like I said, how good Hellfire is in the meta game right now, being able to kill the Grim Patrons. So Alright. By the way, Strifecrow told me that he doesn't feel... Like, it was some time ago, so he might have practiced, by, but he told me that he's not really comfortable with Handlock, um, and, and he thinks that Handlock is a very tough deck to play, especially when he's tired. So now the question is, is he tired? Or is he rested and then happy to play Handlock? Make good decisions. I would say he's probably well rested. He looks a little groggy now, but you know, it's like 12 p.m. for him. Like it's noon for him pretty much. So if he has like an average sleeping schedule, I think it should be not too much of a problem for him. Well, what's better time to play Handlock than uh, playing Handlock at noon? Yeah. All right, so um, the big hunter being strong here, and not really a great follow up for Strife Crow. Maybe it's a Belcher turn, or is there anything else? Like, if there will be a Mortal Call, he could. Hmm. But not really. I was thinking like Iron Big Owl, maybe Shadow Flame, but it's Slash Belcher, right? Just Slash Belcher here, pass. Yep, I don't mind it. Y you know what, Nimsh? I actually really miss this matchup. It used to be one of my favorite matchups to watch back in the day because it like it really I felt like it really tested skill of players um, just like knowing how to play headlock against shaman was actually a, a quite a feat in itself and a lot of players might not have played it for, perfectly I remember specifically a brilliant game by Kalento where he was playing headlock basically he he had mountain giants and twilight drakes in his hand against shaman but he just refused to play them until like turn 10 after he had forced his opponent to use earth shocks and um yeah. 
and hexes on his minions like sludge belchers even i remember the game um I, I think i was even casting it i was like just saying that hey if he plays twilight drake now he's in a bad spot but he never played them like he did play them really late when everything was gone uh, but now that matchup really changed uh, because of the changed cards, this is um, a, a, a different take for the mid-range Shaman. And uh, Handlock has changed a lot. Tor Torison is changing a lot of stuff as well. There's no Torison for Cypher now, but overall the matchup is much different. So Dog decides to play Fire Elemental. Keeping the Pilot to Shredder. Pilot to Shredder is such a double-edged sword, right? Just uh, creating the situations where you don't want to to lose it because it can definitely destroy your board or even stop you from playing a card you want with a mana rave. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Uh, funny you should bring that up because like it's actually pretty relevant uh, against Handlock, especially not just mana wraith, but the Nerubian Weblord just causes a lot of the Handlock minions to be really bad. Like Twilight Drake is the obvious one, but less obvious is like Defender Vargas Sun Fury Protector. If Dog is able to get a Nerubian Weblord off this pilot shredder, then Strifegirl will have a hard time taunting up. Yeah, that's actually amazing how a, a weblord can destroy the, the situation and change everything. But even like a mana wraith is annoying, right? Just uh, getting the cost um, increased by one. Not to mention Doomsayer. Um, okay, so if Strifegirl didn't play the healbot here, he was actually dead. Kind of funny. But this just kind of, kind of tells you like how desperate Stripe Crew is at the moment, playing just an anti keel bot here. Tap anti keel bot, probably like one of the weakest turn sevens I've ever seen from Handlock. Yeah, but on the other hand, like if he um, sees that he's not dead with this, with this board, he can set up for maybe a good Molten Giant turn. If Dog plays this correctly, just like simply clears and doesn't play into Molten Giant Shadow Flame, I think he has this game like pretty locked up. Well, Power Mason's second pilot to Shredder is definitely very strong and um, clear resistant because you are going to get something. And uh, as long as it's not Dumsayer, you might get pretty good minions. If Dog is attacks with either of these minions, then he lets his opponent get off. Uh... Actually, he, uh, Molten Giant Shadow Flame still wouldn't be a thing. So maybe just attacking with one of the minions. Like, yeah, this Philomental, I think this is fine. Oh, he has a lot of damage incoming, like uh, Power Mace is now 5 points of damage with the mech on board. And then there is Defender of Argus, uh, which is plus 2, so 7 points of damage if two minions survive. He's really close to lethal. So what's the turn for Strike Crow? You want to clear... You have a nice silence. Can you play anything big with uh, a lot of attack, and really? Can't play Molten. The, the problem Strifegrow is running into is he's you already used one Hellfire and he has these two clunky Shadow Flames in his hand but nothing to activate them with. So maybe like he's I think he's really regretting his decision to bring two Shadow Flames and perhaps only one Hellfire. Hellfire I think overall is just a better card against Shaman. If Strifegrow goes for Sludge Belcher and Silence one of the Shredders, is he dead? Hex, 10, he will not be dead, actually. That looks I'm like not even play. sure if you, if you silence here. Um, yeah, I guess you might, just to avoid a, a, a random minion being spawned. Like a bluegill. Uh, is Earthshock lethal? Well, actually, yeah, I think this is actually... Um, if you defend her up the... Wind of Air totem, or the uh, the spell power totem. Yeah, this is it. Dog actually, he's gonna win this game. Pretty surprising. A mid range shaman winning a tournament game. What world do we live in? Is this 2014, Nibs? Well, you said it yourself that um, he brought some underdog decks, and he is David, and David won versus Goliath. So it's a one one though. It's a tie. So nobody is leading. And uh, we are going to jump into game number three pretty soon. But Monk, remind me, what are we watching? It's HTC Invitational. What do we know about our tournament? Yeah, HTC Invitational. It's a, uh, sponsored, of course, by HTC, who, that makes really good phones, really great tablets, 
And you know what? You can actually win one of those phones or tablets by just tweeting with the hashtag HTC Esports. Tell them what you think about the tournament. Tell them your predictions. Just uh, maybe compliment them on their phones. And if you perhaps send it from your HTC phone, you might even get a bonus. And a big shout out to Trump for allowing us to have a tournament on his channel. And a big shout out to Trump funds. Trump is going to play later this day. He was going to play today, so don't worry. We're just finishing finishing up um, match number four. We'll have four more matches, single elimination matches. So whoever loses is eliminated. Whoever wins advances to tomorrow, tomorrow same time. All right. So Paladin deck versus Green Page and Warrior. One of the worst matchups for Paladin, right? Like great matchup for the war for the Green Page and Warrior. Yeah. The problem with this matchup is that in the late game you actually can't muster for battle. If you have any 1-1s one on the field, you're probably losing. Can you do it up? Can you use your hero power at least? Yeah, I uh, probably not, I would say. Like, if the hero power is just dead against Grim Patron Warriors. And yeah, here's another problem. Like, Fire Warax deals with all your early game threats. You also, the Warrior has so many Whirlwind effects, and has so many, um, like, unstable ghouls even. Um, is another whirlwind effect. There's so many ways to deal with the, your silver hand recruits that like muster for battle becomes a pretty dead card in the matchup, which is usually in a lot of other matchups the best actually card. your best card. Exactly. Also, Dog is not having a good curve. Just uh, a dude on free. Then he has a pilot shredder, but nothing really uh, great on turn five. So a clunky hand at least. Tyrion might be troublesome. For Green Patron, but Tyrion is turn eight. And that might be that might be too late. Also, exactly. turn eight, Green Patron Warrior, if just left unchecked, might be able to just draw all those cards. Green Patron has so much draw, and uh, this deck is like a like an old Miracle Rogue. It's a combo deck. It's it's much different. Yeah, and we know how poorly uh, Paladin did against Miracle Rogue, and it does I would say even more poorly against Patron Warrior. Yeah, I definitely agree. So Paladin just provides those minions for Green Patron to shine and to copy minions to get um, more whirlwind effects to buff your own frauding berserker. It's just look at this turn. If if Strife Crow this turn would have the whirlwind and just play frauding and whirlwind, how powerful that would be. There would be no way for for Dog to actually counter that. Yeah, pretty sick, I'd say. And even now, there's like no way for dog to kill off this Frothing Berserker. It's quite unfortunate. This Frothing Berserker might just like end up winning the game for him. Yeah, it's certainly possible. Do you do, do you use Consecration here? <laughs> you're buffing Frothing by using Consecration. So you possibly your only way to come back in this game is to hope for the Pilot Shredder to do some work. You could Consecration and then hope for a big game Hunter draw in the next turn. Maybe that's that's I'll actually play. true, yeah. All right, so uh, being Strife Crow, you can go for many things here. Um, I like developing your Dev, Sp Dev Spite. I basically love having Dev Spite on board when I'm Green, uh, green Patron. And he's going for that. He still has Execute if something nasty pops. That's far from nasty. And even, even a sick Battle Rage here. Four cards for two mana. But uh, three, just three cards. That's still fair. Oh, enough. yeah, yeah, because Frothing is actually not damaged. It looked damaged because there is a lot of red next to the, the health. Ten points of damage. The no board is shaking. Dog is shaking his head. Drops Sylvanas, but um, I believe that's it. Like Yeah, there's just way too much damage. There's seven. Yeah, that's lethal, definitely. Just attack with uh, everything but Frothing. Attack face with uh, Death Spite. Um, you can even, like, for theatrics, slam your own uh, Frothing Berserker. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Basically do a lot of stuff here. <laughs> Alright, so Strife Cross spots lethal. And um, that will be game number three done. Strife Crew leading 2-1 to one versus Dog. But Dog is not out yet. He still has that Paladin and he still has the Rogue. So now Strife Crew needs to win with his Warlock deck. The Warlock deck will be the last deck that he needs to win with if he brought the zoo deck that he actually liked. Wait, this is the handlock, and he lost yeah. the handlock. So can handlock win versus Paladin? Well, here's the thing. Even though we said Dog has like the underdog uh, classes, 
all three of his classes actually do fairly well against Handlock if they're teched correctly. Shaman, if they have Doomhammer, for instance, and they run BGH, I would say is favorable. Paladin, I would also say is favorable, and Rogue, I would s consider probably slightly favorable because they can set up a huge dagger and blade fairly their opponents down. So overall, I think Dog is definitely not out of this match yet. Well, he's not out, but I think Rogue is actually tough. Uh, where I agree with Paladin, if, um, if there are equalities, it still might be tough. But uh, we can already see that he has amazing... Well, wow. He has three amazing cards uh, in this matchup. He has equality, which is great versus Giants. He has BGH and Aldor Peacekeeper to deal with the big threats that Handlock is being, uh, going to play. So this looks like Dog is going to take it, and we might actually end up in a game five, but let's focus on the Paladin Handlock game first. Yeah, exactly. I think even though Dog has a lot of answers, um, it's not just the answers that you need to win this matchup. You actually also need card draw, and that's uh, one of the places Paladin might struggle with, uh, struggle with keeping up with the opponent's, like the Warlock hero power, essentially. All right. And, yeah, we even see that's an interesting card from Strife for Go of Faceless. And that card was actually basically phased out of the game because it was deemed too situational. Um, like previously, before GBG came out, basically you had Faceless as a standard handlock. And what basically you would do is you play Molten, Mountain Giant on turn four and then you Faceless it on turn five. And it just forces your opponent to deal with it. But uh, just, yeah, go ahead. There is also one more thing with Faceless, because we haven't seen those cards uh, previously in the previous game, but when I see Faceless in, uh, in Handlock, I'm thinking, hey, maybe there is actually double power overwhelming Leroy combo, because now with Torison, you can play those cards. If you hit if, if you hit a good Torison if you, and you limit the cost of any of those combo cards, you can burst down your opponent from 20. And as you said, like Faceless is a good card by itself, because you can copy the Mountain Giant, or you can, uh, can copy... Um, like your opponent's um, Torison or a Sludge Belcher. It's a great card. Yeah, that's a really good point. Like we saw the Faceless being played in Naria's Druid, for example. And I guess like Faceless might be making a comeback into the metagame, which I always like to see. I like seeing cards cycle in and out. It just shows like this is a very fluid game and like changes are being made all the time. And you also want to surprise your opponents with um, those cards like Faceless to create uh, different board states. Let's say like normally um, decks they match against each other and you have a certain amount of cards to counter whatever your opponent is going to bring. So you have, uh, let's say, an answer uh, against Sylvanas, an answer against uh, Mulganis, um, stuff like that. You do have a limited uh, amount of, of answers in your deck. But then Faceless is kind of breaking it because there is an, like, an extra threat that's not accounted for and you might end up not being able to answer that. Okay, uh, wow, this, this, this is a second BGH. This is what you said, Monk. Like, this deck is actually teched against Handlock. Wow, very interesting. I think it's because, like, because Handlock is getting so popular, um, because it's meant to counter patient warriors, this is not a bad strategy just to bring decks that just really do so well against Handlock altogether. So after seeing a second BGH, would you say that Dog is more Bite than Bark? Um, well, I'm not sure how much Bark he was in the first place. Uh, it's not like he went on Twitter and was like, oh, I'm definitely going to win this tournament, right? So yeah, I would say like this Bark is pretty strong from Dog. Okay. Yeah, he is a very calm person, actually. Very humble as well. Uh, great guy to hang out with. But I just had to make that reference. <laughs> After seeing that with VGH. So right now we can see that Dog is actually full of bite. He is uh, countering Strife Crow here. But then maybe Shadow Flame will work? Or is there... Yeah, Shadow Flame looks good. This yeah, time there is actually all. Watcher. Again, the problem is just generally... Okay, this is interesting. Double Shadow... Double... Uh... Ancient Watcher, so he's just setting up for an eventual Shadow Flame. It's so interesting because um, Strife Crew is going for a second, like for a second giant. He wants to play the Molten, and he wants to face this it because he, he hopes that after seeing BGH, there will be nothing that Doc can use to counter that. Well, maybe he can um, think about equality, 
But then Dog has not only equality, he has the second BGH. So if Striker plays one Molten just to play around equality, not to overextend into equality, he's going to get punished by BGH. If he gets double Molten, he's going to get punished by equality. A very bad situation for Striker right now. Yeah, uh, a lot of times, like back in the days when Faceless was popular in Handlock, you would see players save their Mountain Giants in order to Faceless it on the same turn. Double Mountain Giant is not something that a lot of classes can deal with, but Paladin is one of those classes that can deal with it. So very nice from Strife Crow not to go for that very greedy play. And now Dog is, this is a pretty interesting turn for him because all he can really do is hero power here. Maybe perhaps set up a true server champion. He also has to also consider uh, how much of the board does he clear at this point and how slow can he play it because even though he has a lot of answers, the real problem is that he doesn't have the card draw so in the long term, he might not actually be winning this game. I think I, I like going for face kind of like you're the, the only reason not to go for face would be uh, heal bot so you but you want to force those Molten Giants. Like, you want to get that equality. But then wow, again, he's it's... playing around second Shadow Flame now, which is uh, a very nice play. Yeah, very interesting here. You know, Dog will have the Tyrion on turn 8, but actually, Stripe will be able to faceless that Tyrion. That's actually a pretty good value for a, for a faceless, I would say. Yeah. Getting the weapon and uh, getting a, a nice Tyrion. But then there is no silence for Strife Crow, and Strife Crow is getting lower, and th there is that equality still. Can Strife Crow clear this board now? Almost. Like, he can go for Farseer Shadow Flame if he wants to. I like it. I think this... Like, you're seeing that, uh, as the Handlock player, you're seeing your opponent, he doesn't have too many cards. So you just want to deal with your opponent's threats as uh, easily as possible. I think the problem that Strife Crow is facing right now is... Um, he's thinking, what if my opponent has a Muster for Battle plus Quartermaster combo? Then I can just be really wrecked, because after using both my AoEs, I won't have any answers to uh, that kind of board. Yeah, we still don't know how many um, Hellfires Strife Crew is running. We've seen one. But um, a clear is always good. Oh, wow, a Lay on Hands. An amazing card when you're running out of cards. So just refill your hands. Second Shadow Flame for Strife Crow. It feels like it's a third Shadow Flame. We've seen so many Shadow Flames. <laughs> well, thanks oh, for the yeah. cheery end, Strife Crow says. <laughs> Have you seen Dog's face? Dog was like, wait, what? Dog does draw into his, his Lay on Hands, though, which is uh, like one of the key cards in this matchup, along with along with Tyrion, along with double BGH, so I'd say overall he's drawing fairly well. Alright, using the weapon to get the shield and get the Tyrion done. Uh, Strafko is going to get a weapon, but not that useful, especially after that. Oh, oh wow, there's Silence. Perfect top deck for Strafko. Yeah, Silence is so amazing here. And, Give, um, and also just giving your opponent uh, the Ashbringer weapon is just way too much. Like, as the handlock, yeah, you do have a lot of value in your deck, but because you're, like, always on the line of dying or um, being safe, like, that extra 15 damage that the Ashbringer provides is just almost certainly usually going to put you put you over the top. Yeah. So, uh, a Giant and a Silence uh, to Silence Tyrion, a very powerful turn by Strife Crow, getting the 8-8. The 8-8 is going to die to BGH, but still... I wonder if Dog will be able. Wow, well, I just that's, that Ashbringer might actually turn change the game because I was thinking Whoa. second lay on hands. What is happening here? All right, well, I was know, just going. I'm just going to finish the thought. So the thing was that I thought Dog is able to dismantle Strife Crow's aggression, just killing all those giants, getting rid of faceless. Um, he has that equality, so the Strife Crow will not be able to finish the game. Uh, he will be lacking damage, but giving him the Ashbringer is so important here because he's getting the 15 points out of nowhere. Exactly. Um, I was going to say, like, Dog is actually quite well known for being a great deck builder, so it's, he's definitely, like, showing off his deck building skills here. Just bringing a deck that, like, pretty much no one expects, and that's a yet, yet another deck that's out of the meta, but he brings it back into the meta game by just adding in cards that most people wouldn't run. Oh yeah. 
I'm still a bit disappointed this is not the Dragon Paladin, but I'm going to take it what we get. Okay, so Strive Crow facing this board. Um, he's seen second BGH. He knows that a third BGH is not there. He has to think about um, Consecration. So I've this is um, Shadow Flame time, I believe. But then you do need to deal with Tyrion, and if you use your Molten Giant, I think it's still alright. You, you can play Sludge Belcher after that. Yeah. And uh, I think from Strife Crow's perspective, he's saying that he also has an Ashbringer, so he's even more prepared to like deal that extra damage on the dog. He doesn't know that dog has a second lay on hands though. And a second Master for Balu. And that's a second Shadow Flame gun. Oh, so he's going for the damage. I like it. 10 points of damage from Strife Crow. And. Uh, and he has like 15 damage. Is that so it? No. It's not it, but Strife Crow actually, or rather Dog, he has to clear this board. He can't yeah, just heal instead up. of drawing. And so he has to a, a quality Consecrate. And even then, if, if Strife Crow is able to draw it into any damage, like a Hellfire or perhaps dark a Dark Bomb, like any Draxus. of the two Dark Bombs. Uh, no, Draxus, Draxus actually doesn't work uh, because he has to attack with the weapon. Yeah, it's... It's not like uh, the weapon replaces itself and you can attack twice, <laughs> like it has Wind Fury. Come on, Drax doesn't have a weapon, it's his hands. It's kind of like hero attack, right? Yeah. So, uh, very obvious board clear, and now... Uh, Dog is threatening lethal at this point as well. Although, we can see from Strife Goes hand that he has like taunts for days. Yep, that's true. So, oh, Hellfire, Hellfire is going to finish it. That's it, Monk. Strife Crew is going to take the series. There is nothing from Pilot to Shredder that can save Dog from dying here. So, Strife Crow is going to advance. First HTC sponsored player that actually advancing to Sunday. Whoa. Yeah. Uh, Strife Crow is certainly putting the HTC boys on the board. Uh, unfortunately, they're still down 1 3. But Strife Crow is definitely a, a strong player that can just take it all the way. That's definitely true, but a splendid uh, play from Dog, and I, I, def I commend Dog on bringing Paladin and Rogue. Uh, we haven't seen that Rogue and play, but uh, Paladin was interesting, and um, yeah, he played really well, and uh, I enjoyed the game. So if you like, you can follow Dog. Uh, he's a great player and a great guy. He has a nice stream. But we'll have Strife Crew Advance. So this is our bracket. We actually fixed it before. Uh, it was mostly like a scheduled bracket, but this is the real bracket. So... We are going to see Forsen, as you can see, already advanced, and he is going to play versus Colento or Firebat. Who are we? Who we are going to show them next? Uh, then there will be Ties versus Hyped, and Strife Crow advancing will face Trump or Chucky. I uh, will also have Ties last show RDU. Um, Monk, are you excited about this bracket? I'm super excited. Those players are just great to watch. Yeah, especially like you said, Colento versus Firebat is going to be up next. That's definitely got to be, like, the match to watch out for in the round of 16. Probably, like, the two most on-fire players after uh, Black Rock Routon came out. Or even after GVG came out. Because Firebat, he's won two tournaments recently in Gfinity Spring Masters number one and Gfinity Spring Masters number two. Your Colento, second meanwhile, Dreamhack Bucharest? Uh, of course, second at uh, Dreamhack, of course. Meanwhile, Colento, he's pretty much been winning everything late, lately. The uh, Archon Team Brawl, the uh, Kingwin Pro League season, uh, CN versus EU number two, and the Gamers Assembly Tournament. He's, yeah. he's won four tournaments in the last two months. It's pretty insane. Yeah, those guys are on fire. Um, Firebat especially, and uh, Colento doing really, really good as well. We are going to show you guys this almost like a final match uh, of this tournament. Um, because those guys, they, they really get to final all the time. But we are going to go on a short break. Well, actually, it's a kind of an extended break. We are, go we are going to take 10 minutes and uh, get some rest. And then we're going to be back with four more matches, starting with Farbad versus Colento. Stay tuned. Don't go